Okay, I'm just going to explain my uh, my sensor setup. This is actually from last year, so if you're curious, under uh, North of 60 Projects, it's called uh, 2020 Winter Monitoring Project. And there's a write-up I did for BC Magazine, but uh, anyways, you can see how I typically set up my colonies side by each. Uh, last year, I had a five-frame nook in the middle. I placed my, my sensors on top of the bars. This one here had a an insert in it. Uh, this was for one of the doubles. Uh, but you can notice how basically a side view. I have three sensors. Pretty much this is a top view. So I've got nine sensors uh, laid out on top of the bars. And then last year I had three sensors set up above the slatted rack so along the center axes to give me an idea of what the cluster would look like and then i had one pretty much in the on top of the bottom board just inside the uh on top of the screen bottom board uh and that's about it fairly straightforward pretty simple and uh yeah and i'm doing the same this year except i'm doing it with uh two singles and I've got a double with a single sensor in it. I had a spare one hanging around, so I just used that. Okay, I'll take a couple minutes, just go through some of these charts that I posted. Uh, yep, some of them are complicated. So the easy line is this bottom brown line. So that's the outside temperature. So this is actually showing the hourly data. So it's plotted on the hourly. The gray line the dark blue and the light blue those are the temperatures for the colony the slatted rack colony and the gray line is the warmest temperature on top of that box okay so on top of the frames because that's where the sensors are the blue line is the average temperature of of all those sensors and that that model temperature and this light blue one is the lowest temperature in that structure so you can see that for example at when it was close to minus 40 uh, on the surface of those frames along the edges the coldest temperature was around four degrees Celsius the average was around 13 to 14 Celsius and then the core warm temperature was around uh, 20 degrees Celsius and then you can see these heating spikes. So those are spikes, hourly spikes here and there where the, the cluster is actually creating or boosting and heating the inside. So you can see how it's, uh, it's this cluster keeping warm. It's them turning on the, uh, the furnace. The yellow line, the orange line and the green line is exactly the same values, but for the colony with a, no slatted rack. So the yellow is the high temperature, the orange is the average temperature, and then the green is the, uh, the low temperature uh, on top of those frames. So you can see there's quite a bit of drop. There's probably a good five to six degree cooler in the extreme colds. And the other thing you'll notice is the line is a lot more choppy. So that's that tells me that either the sensor is on the edge of the cluster or the colony is spending a lot of time bouncing around but you can see it's in the cold part here so where there was a cooling and if uh, I'll show you the time lapse and you'll notice that that's probably it's more the edge the cluster was on the edge of some of these sensors hence the reason it's more choppy because you can see that the values here tend to, to level off and there's less jumpiness in it. So same thing with the orange line. And yeah, in a nutshell, that's uh, the first chart. And you can see that, so the slatted rack colony had some brood rearing going on and then I'd say around the, was it the 21st of uh, October, the temperature starts dropping. So this is probably where the queen, maybe the end of open larvae, and they got capped, and then this is at the hatch out. And now you can see that it's leveled off. So all the broods probably hatched out now. Uh, and there's a few interesting patterns, but uh, we'll cover that in a different video. 
and then the non-slatted rack colony started off fairly level around 20 there was a low and now they seem to be hiking up the temperature or just moving around the box so the next chart this one is for the single slatted rack so i'm going to talk about humidity uh, rh so relative humidity and uh, a few different things in the next couple of slides so the dp here stands for the dew point so where water would or moisture would condense out of the air for air measured in the center here so the warm spot okay and i did two intervals so this a point is this top chart and this b point is this bottom profile here and what i did is just, i just wrote down the uh the dew point temperature for both those periods you'll notice the lines are less a lot less choppy the reason that is is i'm just using daily average temperatures versus uh hourly figures so just to get a general idea of what the, the picture looks like so again you can see how there's root rearing uh it starts dropping cooling off and there's a convergence here between the uh the dew point temperature and then the overall average you can see how they they start following each other yellow line here is the uh, i guess it's just the minimum temperature so for here for example it would be eight degrees it would be this yellow line this black line here represents where the theoretical condensation of air here from the middle would start condensing so the dew point of this air is around 15.8 so 16 degrees celsius so this is about the 16 degrees celsius line so this warmer moist air at uh, i think rh is around 70 percent would start condensing out at this point okay so same here and the other thing you'll notice is there's a blue zone here so this blue zone here would not have any bees and the bees would likely be between the yellow and these gray boxes and uh yeah because that's usually where the mantle is it's between 12 and uh, 14 degrees celsius according to some studies so these blue zones here would be open space and that's where air warmer air would cool and then drop out and then go below and that's what we call natural uh, convection and this chart here again for the single slatted rack uh, you can see, so now I'm, I have temperatures, a few temperatures, and relative humidity. You can see as uh, over here the orange line, so 30 degrees Celsius, it starts cooling off to 20 degrees Celsius. So that's the, the end of the brood rearing. Uh, we've got the min temperature and then the, the dew point temperature. Okay, but uh, you can see because the temperature is dropping, uh they're not really releasing any water so it's it just increases the rh because rh is relative to the temperature hence the reason it goes up here this upwards is more from them cooling the air down and what that does is it brings the rh up and actually drops the dew point making dew or condensation more probable in the colony uh, and then these other lines here it just shows the uh, the RH at the entrance or on the bottom board, the gray line. And this top one here is the atmospheric, so the ambient uh, dew point. You can see it's high up in the 90s. The thing to remember, this air is actually really cold. So it's in the minus 15 to sometimes minus 40. So minus 40 air, even at 99%, has very little moisture in it. So it's it's actually not very, it's very dry air over here we've got something called absolute humidity so it's measured in grams per cubic meters <clears throat> and this actually is a measure of how much water is actually in the air because rh is kind of confusing because it's based on temperature but here it compares apples to apples so it's how much water does the air have and you can see how it's a fairly flat line around 11 to 12 grams per cubic meter and over here along the bottom and outside air uh yeah it it hovers between two to three uh, grams 
per cubic meter. So <clears throat> the other thing that can happen here is some diffusion happening because there's dry air here below and probably along the sides of the colony. So there is probably some diffusion happening between uh, this warmer, moist air and the transition points here. But the other, the other difference here is the, the orange line is probably a combination of warmer air cooling off and dropping out and then the fresh air coming in. So it's a mixture of both. So you'd assume that. Uh, and that's about it for that one. Uh, so that was for the slatted rack. So next one, uh, again, lots of charts. This is the same one as the first one I showed you, but this one's for the no slatted rack. And again, you can notice the, uh, the dew points. And once you watch the, uh, the time lapse on these charts, the hourly charts, you'll notice that, uh, there's, uh, especially early days before it got really warm, the dew point is actually quite a bit away from uh, where the probable location of the cluster is uh, but also the position of the sensor is close to this mantle so the edge of the cluster so there's a combination of that effect but you can also i guess probably november during this really cold period we had some extreme dryness inside the cluster uh, again, that might be because it's on the edge, but also the air seems drier and now the moisture seems to go up and that's a combination of probably the cluster moving and centering the sensor and getting a better measurement. And it's probably a combination of both. So they're heating up. So they're increasing the holding capacity of the air for moisture. And again, you can see a convergence here between uh, the dew point and the average temperature of the box. And yep, just uh, once I get more data, uh, I'll be able to, to see if there's other trends. And what I'll do is I'll look at the data on a uh, hourly basis, and it should actually pull out some more information. Okay, so again, this is the RH in absolute humidity. And over here, you can see there's an increase in, I guess it hovered in the 60% range and then it dropped to a low of 43%. And now it's heading back to the 65 to 70% range, which is seems pretty normal. And then you can see that it was actually, the air was dry. And this here could actually be more of a measurement of the moisture content on the mantle edge so the b mantle of the cluster and now because the sensors uh near to the center it's uh it's showing a more accurate not a more accurate but something closer to what would be the moisture content the rh of the center of the cluster so as the cluster moves i'll be able to if i notice this trend again so this will give me a pretty good idea of what the uh RH is uh, at the the clusters mantle interface. Last chart. So people were asking about what's the impact of a slatted rack. Well, so I've got actually three data sets. So I just use last year's data set and this year so far. So the first two, okay, is I've had a sensor failure this year, so I can't measure the temperature above the slatted rack. So this blue line here is last year's data, okay? And the orange dots here are the temperatures on the bottom board. The neat thing is, this year's data set, so the gray dots here, those are the temperatures above the bottom board on the colony with the slatted rack. And you'll notice that they pretty much overlap the orange balls. And if you looked at the relationships here, they're actually pretty damn close. So that's good. What that tells me is that I can probably assume that the blue line or this type of relationship, this gap would be very close it, to... Uh, to what the values actually are. So I can almost extrapolate that this dotted black line here would be the same for this year's data. 
Okay, so if you actually looked at the difference, you can see that at minus 40, if we continue this line, so it's about minus 22 inside the colony. So that's the, uh, the temperature below the cluster. That's if I don't have a slatted rack, where this blue line, because these are the temperatures below the cluster, okay, above the slatted rack, so this gap here is actually what the temperature would be just below. So it's actually around minus 8. So the difference is actually a bit higher than that. So it's almost 12 to 14 degrees at the coldest point. So that's the buffering effect. So that's how much uh, protection in a really cold climate that a slatted rack would offer if you, say, had it in a polyhive. If it was just a pure wooden hive, you wouldn't get the same relationship. The, the gap here is proportional to the amount of insulation that you have. And if you have a top entrance, then the gap here will shrink and the positive effect of the slatted rack will go down. So this is the likely, it's probably the maximum buffer is when you have really good insulation and you're not using a top entrance. Hence, you get a nice uh, warm bubble inside that colony because the hot air can can gather. Okay, so hopefully I didn't confuse you too much, but uh, what I'll do is on this chart here, I'll add the control colony just to show what the temperature would be in the control. So if there's no bees, how cold it would actually become in there. Sounds good.